The step-by-step -step search for what went wrong is well underway. Emergency vehicles now fill the open field where hydro crews had been working just hours before. And I was in the house and heard, heard a loud uh, like metal um, crashing and, and uh, propeller being stopped. And I, I thought to myself, like, there, you know, the helicopter just crashed. I hope not. Kim Clayton says Hydro One had been doing maintenance on power lines around her property at the time of the crash. She says it took about 15 minutes for the first emergency responders to arrive. I saw them go into the ambulance and nobody was leaving. I pieced it together that those guys weren't, um, didn't make it. The Transportation Safety Board is now heading up the investigation. We'll also be looking at pilot records, the training records for the pilot, aircraft maintenance records, the aircraft history, all that stuff we'll be looking at. A source briefed on the crash tells CBC News the weather does not appear to have been a factor and officials will focus on whether this is a case of either mechanical or human error. Uh, the families have been notified at this time and um, we would ask that you respect their wishes and, and don't, we're not releasing the names at this time out of respect to the victims. All of the victims worked for Hydro One, which is now trying to offer whatever comfort it can to their loved ones. We're in the midst of the investigation. Investigative bodies are on the scene and we're working diligently right now to ensure we have appropriate support for our team members that have worked with these individuals in, in addition to supporting the families. You can see police are still here protecting the crash site. They'll stay through the overnight hours, even though there isn't much investigating they can do until first light tomorrow. Katie Simpson, CBC News, Flinton, Ontario.